My name is Dr. Gunter Kohne. I'm the deputy director of Miami Cancer Institute, the chief of blood and marrow transplantation and immunotherapies, and also the chief of hematologic oncology at Miami Cancer Institute. AML landscape is also significantly changing. Uh, you may be aware for over 30 years we had two drugs or one, one induction chemotherapy combination of two drugs, that is Idarus and RRC, we called it 7 plus 3, that has not changed over 30 years plus. Now we, similar to the approach of multiple myeloma, we have novel targeting agents that allow us to really dedicate the risk stratification of patients with acute myeloid leukemia from the very beginning on. For example, today we would not treat a FLID3 positive AML or a TP53 mutated AML the same than a good risk AML. That is really important from the beginning. My position here at Miami Cancer Institute allows me to stratify patients from the diagnosis on rather than to wait for the leukemia doctor to send the patient for transplantation because we know first published by Richard Stone in the New England Journal of Medicine, for example, that I, um, the treatment before the transplant may also affect the, the outcome of the patient post-transplantation. So in other words, you can determine, can improve the outcome by doing the right thing before the transplantation. The Redify study that I alluded to uh, was focusing on FLID3 positive AMLs that uh, then got mitostaurin in combination with mitostaurin as a FLID3 inhibitor in combination with 7 plus 3 chemotherapy. And this led to more patients going into transplant, but also led to approved outcome um, of patients that got the combination compared to 7 plus 3 alone. So that was just the beginning of uh, risk stratification of acute myeloid leukemia. Now we have at my place a dedicated FDA-approved clinical protocol for patients with FLIR3-positive AML. We have a dedicated clinical trial for patients with TP53-mutated AML, and we also have post-transplantation strategies that, based on minimal residual disease, allows us post-transplantation to, to improve the outcome of patients afterwards. Now, um, CAR T-cells and AML is a critical question. So what can we target on acute myeloid leukemia? A little bit more difficult than in the other settings as acute lymphoid uh, leukemia or lymphoblastic leukemia or multiple myeloma because acute myeloid leukemia's molecules are shared between the leukemia cells and the normal hematopoietic stem cell. That limits us, of course, to target CD33 is the one that I'm thinking of, limits us to target CD33 because if we target it and treat with CAR T cells, we will likely eliminate also the healthy hematopoietic stem cell and with that we will induce a myelosuppression. So that um, has been addressed. I'm happy to report that, I, that I'm the principal investigator of a brand new clinical trial that is the VOR uh, VP101 study, in which case we can collect and purify the donor hematopoietic stem cells in the laboratory, we can, by CRISPR technology, silence the expression of CD33. And with that, we have a product that is a healthy stem cell product that is CD33 negative. We transplant the patient with the CD33 negative product, and they have, as of now, the first few patients, a complete normal engraftment. So that will then allow us to give anti-CD33 directed medications or CAR T cells in the long run because the only cell that is positive for CD33 is a leukemia cell. Now that, is a, that is a brand new approach and uh, I think highly innovative. First indication that this is effective uh, has been presented just um, two days ago at the ASTCT meeting in, uh, in Orlando. And we will have a presentation at the EBMT meeting in Paris in a few weeks from now, showing the first three to four patients have a normal engraftment with CD33 negative stem cells and CD33 negative cells. We can target specifically the uh, residual, if there are, leukemia cells with anti-CD33 approaches. In the long run, we are working now with a subsequent protocol to, to develop donor-derived CAR T cells 
specifically targeting the C33 and the leukemia cells.